Hi everyone, my name is Richard Santoro and I welcome you to Third and Zen, the YouTube channel where every week I'm sharing a spiritual message to nourish ourselves, our mind, body, and soul. First, thanks for stopping by the channel. Thanks for checking out today's video. I hope this video finds you doing well. I know we're in the time of year, midwinter, where it's a little challenging. It's colder. It's, you know, not as sunny out. The days are shorter and uh, we're stuck inside a little bit more. Maybe we have the post-holiday malaise and letdown and, and that's a little bit of a... The challenge itself and that's on top of just life in general so with all of that i hope that you're doing okay I, uh, and if not i hope you're taking the time the energy the effort the love the understanding to care for yourself heart mind body and soul and maybe in the process hopefully we're we're taking care of each other as best we can um if you feel like liking subscribing sharing that's all appreciated but either way thanks for being here thanks for being you and let's uh let's get ourselves in a space where we're preparing for today's message so let's take a nice deep breath take a moment and just give ourselves permission to just breathe i breathe in the peace i breathe out love just maybe soften release any tension take another breath We'll do our best to just be here now as best we can. And let's get started with today's message, shall we? So today's going to be a little bit different, a little bit of more of a unique type of message, something a little different than what I've done before. Um, I always open these videos with talking about the mission that I, I have here in that I'm sharing videos to nourish ourselves, heart, mind, body, and soul, and it's a holistic idea caring for ourselves holistically, but I'm today going to be narrow, more narrowly focused in the mental health lane, something I want to discuss. And in unison with that, it's going to be talking about myself personally, which is something a little bit more unique, letting myself be a little bit more vulnerable and share some stuff. So with that being said, let's just jump right in and I'll do my best to weave in and out of spaces of sharing about myself and also you know, making it a little bit more of a message to, to, you know, to nourish ourselves. So anyway, that's enough context, enough intro. Let's, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, doing these videos, this format of sharing messages, is not easy for me. It really isn't. It hasn't been uh, since the get-go, since doing this for a couple of years now, lots of videos. Uh, I have insecurities. I have self-image issues. I have body image issues. I've had them all my life, and it's an issue. I don't like pictures of myself. I don't like having my picture taken. I don't like being recorded. I don't like seeing myself. It hits me in spaces and in areas that aren't just, oh, I don't like that picture. It goes deeper for me. And it can make me feel certain things about myself and put me in certain mental spaces that are a challenge, that are difficult, that are painful. Um, but I'm doing my best with these videos. As you can see, I continue to record them. There are times where it is extremely difficult. And I'll talk about that. Uh, now, what I do with this is I, I do my best and allow myself to hold space for the challenges that it brings, to care for it, to, you know, to sit with it if need be and say, okay, this is here, let's care for it, let's deal with it. And I do hold space for that because that's necessary, you know, to deal with it. It's rising to the surface and I'm doing something that I love. And even though it brings challenges and even though it brings up issues, you know, we, I'm going to push forward. I'm going to do it, but I hold space for it. You know, I know that, you know, I've, I've discussed this with people and the easy answer that, that I was given. And I know this is that what matters is that I'm doing my best to do God's work, to serve God in this format, in this forum, and that there are folks that might appreciate these videos, and that's what's important, and I know that. That's it's very easy to land there, and I'm aware of that, but yet again, at the same time, it's also still very valuable for me to acknowledge and hold space for the challenges that do exist for me in doing this personally. Um, it's not easy to let go of those insecurities, to let go of those particular issues that I, that I have or that we might have in, our, in terms of our mental health, in terms of whatever it is that we have. You know, I am an extremely, extremely private person. You know, I'm very guarded. I put a wall up. You know, I, I, I have a nice facade 
of where I've mentioned this in other videos, I'm an ambivert, meaning that I can be extroverted and introverted. And I do a nice job of very friendly, very outgoing, very, but I defer. I like the focus on other people, not on myself. And the point I'm, I'm making that point to say, having the focus on me right here, right now, seeing myself, it's not easy. You know, when I was doing this in church, it was different. It was me in front of people. And it didn't get into my head that people were looking at me. I can live with that. I wasn't looking at me. I didn't see me. You know, again, I don't like pictures of myself. I don't like recordings of myself. I don't like seeing myself. And there are times that, you know, just seeing myself on screen is tough. But there are times that what I have to do after I record a video is go through it frame by frame to find a decent image for the thumbnail, for the video. And that is a brutal task for me because I'm literally at times looking through each moment of myself and seeing each seeing myself so closely and it's rough it can mess with me and there are times it's like okay and then there are times it lands and can be real challenging I'll talk about that so this format is difficult you know I was talking about this with someone um with someone who happens to be a pastor you know I was talking about what I was doing you know, here with this video, what are you up to? What's your ministry? How's it going? And just catching up and talking. And, and I shared that um, this is what I'm doing. And oh, we talk about the video and that's cool. The, you know, the channel. And I alluded to these challenges that I have as part of this journey that I've been doing with this video, with this channel. And I alluded to that, to these insecurities, what, everything I just discussed. And I saw this person had a visible reaction. And an audible one as well, like they could totally understand and might feel similar. You know, as, as a pastor, as someone who gets up in front of churches, they're okay with that. Like I said, I, w I am. But the idea of seeing yourself pictured on screen, all that, I could see it landed. And I could see that it was a genuine, ugh, for them. And, and that affirmation, that validation with empathy, it did help me. It helped me feel better about that. So again, this for me is a challenge. Now, if somebody was talking to me about themselves and about having this challenge, I could be more objective about it and give them counsel on it. You know, I could look to nature um, and talk about the idea that nature isn't perfect. You know, we don't have to be perfect in our image. That's obvious to say, but a challenge to accept as an individual about ourselves. You know, looking at nature, nature is not perfect, but that's part of what makes it so awesome. And this might be something I would tell somebody. You know, we love to be in nature and to bask in the beauty of nature and even in the imperfectness of nature. And as I mentioned in a video about trees that I shared, it's almost even the wrong verbiage to say imperfectness when it comes to nature because nature just is and we accept it as it is you know we accept that trees are unique and different and each one looks how it looks and we accept that you know we go to the beach and the shoreline changes and looks different every time and and we accept that certain things in nature can look unique or even weird and we love nature for what it is yet we don't love ourselves in that same way. And let me rephrase that because I'm always so mindful about our, we, about when we share a message, it's we. But I'll say, I don't love myself in that way. I'll put the, I'll put the focus on myself for a second. We love nature for what it is, yet I don't love myself in that same way. You know, we don't think twice about nature's uniqueness or maybe imperfectness. I don't think twice about nature's uniqueness and imperfectness. Yet I seem to only focus on my imperfectness. And maybe that's something you might share in as well. And if so, love to you. Now, looking further at nature, you know, again, do we look at nature? Uh, do we look at a tree and, and call it ugly or imperfect or whatever? No. Do we look at the, you know, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought here. I'm going to skip some stuff I wanted to say, so I apologize. Let me jump ahead to, you know, where I want to finish up talking about nature. And thank you for 
caring for this moment. You know, everything we consider beautiful and wonderful in, in nature happens to be imperfect. So the question I ask myself, and the question for us, why can't we accept ourselves in that way? Why can't I accept myself in that way? You know, everything in nature, everything in God's creation is unique looking. So maybe we ought to, this, this, this analogy is a little bit clunky, so I apologize. And I'm going to move forward. Again, this was me being vulnerable and talking about myself and bringing up nature as a comparison and, and doing it off the cuff and it not feeling right, so I'm going to rein it in. And the bottom line is we can look at nature and appreciate its uniqueness. And yet, I don't like to see myself. I, I, I hate pictures of myself. I avoid them at all costs. I still see myself as the as the chubby kid. I was chubby for a while when I was a kid. And I still see myself in that way. I'm still that person inside in many ways. Um, insecure, vulnerable, not feeling good about how I look. I see all of my imperfections. I, I don't like what I see when I see myself. And that is tough. It is. It can put you, it can put me in a in a place, in a rough place mentally. It makes it challenging as a person. And it makes it challenging in terms of sometimes the mental health well-being. And it makes it challenging, as, as, as I said, to, to do these videos. But wait, there is more that makes it more fun. And I say that facetiously. Because with all these things that I'm discussing, my challenges, how I feel about myself when I do these videos, with all that, when it sometimes can be rough, then comes the guilt, that added challenge. The guilt that I would feel, or do feel, of focusing on that stuff while I'm trying to serve God. I know that how I look and feel about me isn't what this is all about. It isn't what this video is about. It isn't what this channel is about. It isn't what I'm doing in life. I know that that's not what it's about. I know that it's about serving God. So I feel bad. I feel guilty when that happens to be the focus. When it distracts me in that moment or moments from God and from, from what I'm trying to do here. And what I trust, what I trust is God using me to do. So there's that moment of, of feeling bad about that. But at the same time, I also understand the psychology and the spiritual psychology of it. I understand the importance, as I've, as I've mentioned early in the video, of, of holding space. And now this is where I really want to talk about maybe for us a little bit. I understand the importance of holding space for all of these thoughts, these feelings, these issues. I understand the importance of not placing guilt on myself and the importance of us not placing guilt upon ourselves. I understand the importance of not giving in to a theology of guilt, which, let's be honest, has defined way too much of Christianity in such unhealthy and detrimental and toxic and anti-heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ type ways. You know, not giving in to that guilt, that theology of guilt that really is a big part of Christianity at times. So maybe we don't do that. Maybe we don't give in to that when we have to hold space for multiple things, for serving God, for, for following God, for following Jesus, and also dealing with, you know, maybe thoughts that arise in, in that journey. I know that I am made in the image of God. I know that we are made in the image of God. I know that we are all, each one of us, made in the image of God. And I know that with God's grace, I can preach the heck out of that concept, for the, hopefully for the benefit of others. I know I can preach on the concept of being made in God's image. It's a great topic, and I can preach on it. And yet, I also know that when it comes to myself and the exterior outlook of myself and my interior thoughts about myself, that concept being created in the image of God, it's a struggle for that to 
make me feel better. It's a struggle for me to have the idea of being created in the image of God penetrate through those insecurities, those issues, those self-image issues. It can be a wrestling match. And I hold space for that with love. And we all should if that's something we relate to. Now, one reason why I do persist in doing this, despite how sometimes it can genuinely mess up, mess me up. Let me, let me start over. Let me start this sentence over. One reason why I continue to do these videos, why I continue to do this channel, why I record and make myself see myself, despite the image issues I have, is because of precisely that because of the image issues I have. And let me explain what I mean. Um, let me give a, a, an example. You know, earlier in my ministry at church, when I had the opportunity, and the opportunities to lead worship service or be involved in worship service or, you know, lead or be involved in spiritual things, I found it challenging to lead people in prayer, to lead corporate prayer, um, to lead people in prayer Specifically when it called for praying extemporaneously, praying just right off the cuff, praying, you know, led by the Spirit with whatever happens to come out of my mouth, not reading off a text in some way. It, it was a challenge, you know, when it was time to have people pray and I was the one to do that, to just come up with the prayer off the cuff. It was it was a challenge. It wasn't easy. And that's totally OK. It's it's not an easy thing to do in general. It takes time. It takes practice. It takes experience. It takes connecting with God's grace. So, you know, don't get me wrong. It wasn't a hindrance. It wasn't a huge issue. Um, but I knew at that time early on in my ministry, you know, it was it was a challenge. It wasn't one of the easier things for me to do. Um, I don't think that at the time anyone noticed, anyone that was present happened to notice when I was doing it. I, you know, I noticed it a little bit. Where most things weren't a challenge for me, this was. So I remember, well, you know, during this time, um, I was taking a walk at the Arboretum, just connecting spiritually, connecting with God, the Spirit. Um, there was no agenda. I was just walking. And I was daydreaming and I was contemplating and soaking in nature and walking and, and doing my best to be open to God. And in turn, be mindful of whatever thoughts happened to float across my mind. So I was walking and I had the idea come to me that I should do a weekly prayer service. And as I was walking, it was a very, very persistent thought that wasn't going to go away. So I didn't make it go away. I held space for it and allowed it to be there as I walked and to grow and to naturally this thought take its root. Um, and I didn't push it away and be like, nah, <laughs> that'd be crazy. I'm not doing that. I don't like leading people in prayer. Are you nuts? But I followed the thought and then kind of, you know, realized, okay, I, I got it. I got it. And I remember, you know, I went to my pastor at the time and church and said this is what I want to do and pretty soon I started a Friday evening prayer service at my church even though or kind of because I wasn't great at reading prayer extemporaneously and I loved it I loved doing that I loved doing these Friday evening prayer services it was a joy in so many ways it really was and and it was leading people in prayer was at as I said, once something that I struggled with early on, and it soon became something that I was very comfortable with, leading people in prayer off the cuff, from the spirit, from the heart, off the top of my head, um, as the words would just come and flow. It became something that I was comfortable with doing. So in short, the point I'm trying to make, and I feel like I spent too much time making this point, so forgive me, but the point that I was trying to make, this was something... I faced something that was an issue for me. I faced something that was a challenge because I trust, I trusted at the time that that was what God had wanted me to do. So where I'm landing with this, that's why I do these videos, even though they're a challenge, in part because it is a challenge for me, because it brings stuff up, because it's what, you know, I felt God felt what God was pushing me to do. So that's why I continue to do this. Despite the challenges I have personally, I feel that it's what God would like me to do. And my thinking is, 
was and still is, is that maybe, like the prayer service, in doing something and facing something that I'm challenged with personally, it would help me overcome that challenge. These videos, it hasn't been the balm or the cure for these personal challenges I have. If anything, as I've mentioned, just the opposite. It, it brings this stuff up for me. They persist. So doing this might not have the transformative immersion therapy that God seemed to have in mind with me leading that weekly prayer service and leading prayer in a way that was a challenge. And that's okay. It might not be the same thing. This isn't the same journey. Maybe this particular issue that I have Actually, I'm not going to say maybe. This particular issue that I have is much bigger and much deeper. And it's going to take more than just a, some immersion therapy. Um, or maybe doing these videos won't change a thing about my self-image issues. And God is just like, dude, I, I want you to do these videos in spite of that. I'll care for you during these challenges, but you're going to continue to do them. So again, that's okay too. But my thought of this being a psychological aid to me is here, it's there. Knowing that I'm facing these challenges, knowing that I'm doing these videos despite how sometimes it makes me feel, I'm gonna to continue to do them. So again, I just wanna circle back and say, this isn't easy, it really isn't easy. And, and getting very personal, what prompted me to do this particular video, discuss this personally, um, not long ago, I recorded a video, as I normally do, and I went home and I, and I, you know, I uploaded it to YouTube to schedule it um, for that following Sunday. And man, I got to tell you, it, it really, jam that this particular video, seeing myself, it really jammed me up mentally and inside more than I've been jammed up before. Um, and I've been jammed up before mentally, uh, you know, with seeing myself and recording these videos. But this one, this one was tough. It just hit differently. It just, it, it put me in a, in a much more vulnerable and pained place. And I held space for that. And I did the best that I could to manage that in a healthy and loving way. And I did set aside, I did, I did have a thought while I was dealing with it. And, and I set it aside to ponder and I'll get back to it. And I did reach out to a loved one that day to share that I was struggling with recording that video and to share how I was feeling, you know, seeing myself, I really, I just feel so, feel all the things that I feel when I see myself and it's really been a tough day and seeing myself and it put me in a place and, and this particular person I was talking to, they, they were, you know, they're aware of my issues in this area of my self-image issues um, and this was someone you know, I talked to, I shared it with, and I shared the challenge of that day. And I texted them later in the day to say that, you know, I was struggling and doing my best to manage it, but still hadn't gone away. And they said, and I quote, I'm going to quote them here. They said, I mean, you could post a video about struggling since you're going through it. And that was the thought that I had, had and pondered earlier and set aside. But then mentioning it, it kind of confirmed it to say, yeah, maybe you should do that. So that's what I did. That's what I'm doing right now. I sat down in that moment when I was, you know, it was towards the end of the day and, you know, it had been a day long struggle and this loved one encouraged me to do this. So I sat down and I typed out my thoughts. I typed everything out that I was thinking, everything out that I was feeling. And this is something that, that has been you know, people are encouraged to do therapeutically. It's such a healthy thing for us to do for ourselves when we are struggling in, in any way, in some mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual way, struggling in any way to sit down and write it out, write about it, journal it in whatever way, just get it out, write it out. It is so healthy to do, and that's what I did. And that's what I'm sharing with us, was just my thoughts on everything. So just to, just to land this a little bit better for us. So I'm guess I'm do, I guess I'm doing all of this for a few reasons. First, I'm doing it for the sake of being open, of being honest, of being vulnerable, to share these things 
with all of us about myself. Just giving of myself and sharing. Um, and as someone once wrote in a book about the New Testament, we know a lot about the Apostle Paul because Paul told us a lot about Paul. And that really served scripture very well as personal references. So I thought that doing this might be akin to that. And to that point, that's the second reason why I'm doing it. I did it writing all the thoughts and sharing this video. I did it, honestly, to try to help myself a little bit. You know, again, every single video I open with a that semi-mission statement, you know, welcome to Third and Zen, the YouTube channel, where every week I'm sharing a personal message to nourish ourselves, heart, mind, body, and soul. I mean, it's right, it's right there. It's right in the mission statements. So what would it say about me if all the times that I've encouraged us to care for ourselves, heart, mind, body, and soul, what would it say if I didn't do that when it was necessary for myself? And conversely, to that mission statement, that's part of why I did it. I did it for myself, and I did it for us as a reminder that we need to care for ourselves. As a reminder that there are times for me that I struggle with things that, that may not be obvious to the outside world. Insecurities. I have them. Self-image issues. I have them. Body image issues. I have them. They're there. And by me sharing that, I'm sharing it as a reminder to say, it's okay. It's okay that we that we have something. It's okay for me to have that and not feel bad about that. And it's okay for me to share that. Meaning it's okay for all of us to have something and it's okay for all of us to share that when needed. It's okay for you. It's okay for all of us to have issues, to have challenges. And it's okay for all of us to say, hey, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z with this and that. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that I shared this video and these thoughts and all of this and this part of my journey and where I was to remind us, actually not to remind us, I shared it to, to remove the stigma, to try to continue for us to remove that stigma, to, to be able to speak out about these things, to speak out out loud and to not feel guilt or shame if we struggle in some way, particularly in this case or in any case, with our mental health, with our mental well-being. I know that for me, my insecurities about my appearance and my bodily image and how I look, I know that it's a challenge for me. It's an issue for me. And it brings things up that are difficult for me. And I know that in doing these videos... All of that really can come to the surface. And there are times that it can be really, really difficult to deal with. And I know that sometimes I hold space for that and do a great job, like a rock star. It's like, okay, it's there, I got it, it's okay. And I know that there are times that I really struggle and it really, it pulls me down. It really does. And that's okay. Because that's how these things can work, unfortunately. So, my friends, I am here to remind all of us, to remind you that if you have something, whatever it is, something that falls into the area of mental and emotional health, something that either pops up here and there and comes to the surface or something that is a persistent thing, whatever it is, if you have something, it's okay. Don't feel bad about it. I don't. Don't feel shame about it. I don't. Don't feel less than or unworthy or invaluable. I don't. And, and you ought not to either. And I'm here to remind us that, that if you do have something, it's okay to talk about it at your comfort level. It's okay to need care for it. It's okay to seek care for it more than okay to seek care for it. I encourage that. And it's more than okay to ask for help. In fact, again, it's more than okay to ask for help. Do that, 
please let yourself be helped in the ways that you might need help. I just wanted to remind us of that. You know, I veered from talking about my stuff in this moment to focus on you because, yeah, that's the purpose of these videos. And that's, that's what I want to try to do. It's not about me. It's about, it's about us. It's, it's easier, again, to be honest, for me to help you than it is to help me. And I know that sometimes I need the reminder to get that help you seek, get that help you need in these issues. So all of us, we can do that. So again, I'll close on this. Let me bring this in. That landing felt a little clunky. I struggle. I struggle with these videos. I struggle so often at times doing these. It's a pure joy, but I, at the same time, it coexists with really struggling. And if in this video, and if my sharing of any of this, if it was helpful for you, I'm happy about that. I'm, gra I'm grateful for that. And just know, please, that you aren't alone. Just know that you aren't alone, okay? That's, I guess, that's also what I, I want to end with here. Just know that you are worthy of all the love, all the kindness and patience and understanding, empathy from others and from yourself, okay? And I'm going to end with this. In the immortal words of the late, great college basketball coach, Jimmy Valvano, which always, always, these words always get me, don't give up. Don't ever give up. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay, my friends, thank you for stopping by the channel and checking out this video. It was a unique one. Um, I, I hope in some way you found it nourishing. And I wish you nothing but peace and love and fellowship with God in your journey going forward. Have a great day. Have a great week. I love you all. Ciao, ciao.